Hello, this is Haywire again with another installment in a series of microwave repair videos. In today's video, we're going to focus on changing a capacitor. And for this segment of video, I've got a subject microwave that has a failed capacitor in it. I've already determined that it's bad, but before we do the change, I'm going to actually start the unit so you can hear what it sounds like with a bad capacitor. This sound is also uh, very similar to the sound you'll hear if the magnetron is failed or if the diode is failed. So we'll give it a try here. You notice the loud grumbling sound and you saw all the lights dim. It's pulling a very heavy load because the capacitor is shorted in this case. So now that we know that We've got something wrong with the high voltage end. Um, the first thing we'll check is the capacitor, and I'll show you how to check it. Let me set the camera down for a moment. The first thing we're going to do is disconnect the power so that all power is off to the microwave. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that that thing doesn't have any stored energy in it. And a piece of wire bent into a U like this is the best way to do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to bridge across the terminals of the capacitor with this piece of wire. Sometimes you'll get a spark, sometimes you won't, depending on the design of the unit. The other thing you want to do is go to the metal frame and go to both sides one at a time. That will ensure that there's no stored energy in that capacitor and it's safe to work on. So now that we've done that, we'll take just one wire off the capacitor. So now you've got wires only on just one terminal. So we've taken this wire off. So that's what's called isolation. We've now isolated everything else from the circuit through the capacitor so we can test the capacitor on its own without interference by other things in the circuit. To do this, you need an older style volt ohm meter, such as this one that looks like this, that can read out in an analog scale on uh, resistance. We've got this set to resistance times one, and what we're going to look for on that capacitor is just a little tiny blip of the scale. If we get anything other than that, especially if it goes full scale to zero, then we know we've got a shorted capacitor. So we take the probes and touch the probes onto the terminals of the capacitor and read the meter. And in this case, the meter went all the way to zero. So that's an indication that that capacitor is indeed shorted. So now we've got to replace the capacitor. So the way to get that capacitor out of there is there's a little metal strap right here that holds that capacitor in. And it's usually one little Phillips head screw that holds that metal strap to the body of the microwave. Sometimes it's on the bottom, sometimes it's on the back, sometimes it's on the housing with the fan, but it's always easy to spot because they all look pretty much the same as this one. So we're going to take that capacitor out of there without removing any other wires off of it. So I'll set the camera down and I'll take the capacitor out. Oftentimes, that metal bracket may have a, a tab on it, so you might have to squeeze on it a little bit. And a lot of times they also go into a slot on the other side. So you just slide it out of the slot, lift it up. 
And there is the capacitor with its metal bracket. The metal bracket simply just, you can just kind of stretch it out and lift it off or slide it off. And oftentimes the diode is attached to it, so it won't go very far because the diode is still attached to it. That's where the diode usually grounds. So the next thing we need to do is to get the correct capacitor. And the capacitor is marked in a value called microfarads. I can't really get a very good angle on it with this camera. But you, you can now you can see it right there. It says 0.91 microfarad. So we've got to find another capacitor roughly the same size and within 0 0.05 microfarad of the value of the bad one. Since I've already cannibalized a number of older microwaves, I already have three set aside that we can put in there as long as one of them will fit. Looks like these two will probably fit. This one is a little bit taller. But each one of these is a 0 0.91 microfarad. So we'll go ahead and put this one in there. Because capacitors aren't all created equal. If you look at the values of so many of those, a lot of them can be anywhere from as low as 0.58 to as much as 1.3. So you want to make sure that you put a, another capacitor in there that's matched to your system. So we'll take the capacitor that we want to put in, and you'll notice on the top of it is a little dot of solder. So we're going to match up the wires in the same order that they came out of the old one onto the new one, one wire at a time. So with the dot in the same position, like this, dots on the bottom, the dots on the bottom of the new one, we'll take each wire one at a time and move it from the old one to the new one. So I'll set the camera down and do that. Sometimes it helps to have a pair of needle nose pliers to get the wires off of the old terminals. And sometimes the terminals have a little tiny button on the inside of the back. It's a release button that you'll need to push to take those wires off the terminals where they'll struggle to get the wires off of them. So there's the bad one. Now we put the metal holder back on it. Turn it around, slide it in place. Line up the bracket and put the screw back in the hole. And sometimes if you're putting screws into a hole vertically, you might have a lot of problems keeping the screw on the screwdriver. You can either use a screwdriver with a screw retainer, or you can use a little piece of masking tape to hold the screw onto the head of the screwdriver. Until you can get the screw started, thread the screw in. Tighten the screw down. Now that the new capacitor is in there, we'll make one last check to make sure that the wires are not touching metal. Even though they're insulated, it's a good idea to keep everything separated and off of the casing of the microwave. Now it all looks good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to test it. So to do that, we want to make sure that we've got something in there for it to do. It has to have some kind of a, a load to heat up. So I've got a bottle of water we're going to put inside because we're only going to run it for just a few seconds. So we don't want to get the 
that bottle so hot that it ruptures. So now we're going to restore the power to the microwave and see what we get. So after we take a moment to set the clock, in certain cases you have to have the clock set on some models before they'll run. We'll put uh, five seconds on it in case there's some kind of a problem. Um, we can hit stop right away, but ideally if the new capacitor is good and everything's ready to go, we shouldn't get the loud roar and we should just uh, get a nice quiet buzz when about a second or a second and a half of hitting start. Here we go. And it's a success. So that's how you do a capacitor change. We hope that uh, this video was helpful. We hope that you'll hit the like button if this was helpful. And if you have any questions or would like to see any another video in this series, uh, please leave me a comment and I'll be happy to uh, give you a video that will meet your needs. Thank you and have a good evening. Goodbye.